those of you who might not know me, like as Rocky just said, my name's Kaylin Garcia. I'm married to my loving husband, Comanche. Most people only know me through him, so I always have to throw that out there. Uh, we have a beautiful eight-year-old daughter, Charlie, and we've been coming to Hillside since Charlie was in the nursery. I have the most supportive parents in the entire world. I'm going to share my face story after hiding something in my life for so long. I know that I'm not alone in my struggles, and I'm here to tell you today that you aren't alone either. At the end of this, I'm going to play a song called God is in this story. All the people I just named are in my story, but most importantly, God is in mine too. I have been diagnosed with health anxiety and death anxiety. It started a couple years ago, but recently took over my life last summer. I have had so many panic attacks that I quit getting them. I've not only had them at home, but I've had them in the school pickup line, the groceries on days without sleeping, and fear that I would die in my sleep. Every single ache or pain that I would feel, or if I had the common cold, I immediately thought that I was going to die. I would constantly Google my symptoms and immediately spiral out of control and would contact my doctor over and over to be seen. I would check my oxygen and my heart rate no less than 30 times a day. I would count my breaths every hour and would shake in fear if I was above or below the average number. I wouldn't leave my house in fear of having something medically happen to me while I was out. I would make sure that my house was spotless, laundry was done, and all things for my husband and daughter were taken care of just in case I died that day. I would call my parents all hours of the day or in the middle of the night just crying, not saying a word because I couldn't breathe. I would beg my husband to take me to the emergency room because I knew this was it. I was going to die that day. I would sit at my kitchen table for hours upon hours and just cry. I beg my doctors to send me to specialist after specialist. I have worn a 24-hour heart monitor, a 10-day heart monitor. I did a stress test. I had an echocardiogram, and I had a sleep study done. I also begged to get my blood tested monthly, and I'm only 33 years old. I got so bad that my doctor started to see me every two weeks. I would make her listen to my heart and my lungs over and over, I would cry so hard and would start to panic right in front of her in her office. Even when leaving the doctor's office and she told me that I was fine, I would sit in my car in the parking lot and have a panic attack that she was wrong and something was not right. I have had friends come over to my house to check my blood pressure. I would send pictures to my friends to see if I had blood clots. And I would have my parents spend the night with me countless nights because I didn't want to be alone while my husband was working third shift. I would make my husband use many of his personal days at work just to be home with me at night. I then practically begged him to change his shift at work so he could be home during my worst times, which was at night. I would disrupt my family and my friends while they were sleeping. If my husband was off, I would still be worried and would end up keeping him and my daughter wide awake all hours of the night because I didn't want to be alone at all and would just cling beside them. I knew that my husband, my daughter, my family, and my friends didn't deserve this broken version of me, and I knew that I didn't deserve this broken version of me. My mom would constantly say that I was under attack by the enemy, but I didn't want to believe it. I wanted to believe that it was Sunday, and it just so happened that on my Sundays to teach, I would wake up thinking I was having a heart attack, a stroke, or something else was wrong because I had every single symptom. It just didn't make sense to me that it could be the enemy because I teach vacation Bible school. I've also taught the bigger kids. So I would continue calling my parents when I was home alone when the attacks were happening. My mom reassured me that I was under attack by the enemy, that if I was working hard for God, Satan was going to try and work harder to bring me down. A friend that I knew was battling these anxieties and attacks sent me a quote not, not long after my mom continued to tell me it was Satan coming after me and getting bolder in God. The quote said, Satan wouldn't be attacking you so persistently if there wasn't something of value inside of you. Thieves don't break into empty houses. That night, I had multiple panic attacks back to back to back. I couldn't breathe, but made it to the spare room to call my parents so my husband and daughter wouldn't see how bad I actually was. When I called, they began to pray so hard for me over the phone, and I was just crying and crying. My mom then shouted, the devil does not want to mess with me or my daughter, and she rebuked him for me and told him to flee. All of a sudden, my tears turned to a smile, a smile that I have not truthfully felt since the year 2021. After our conversation, I went downstairs to do laundry, trying to keep my mind busy. When I was doing this, I was continuing the prayer that my parents had started. I was asking Jesus to help me, guide me, show me just how near he was to me. 
There is a poster on our basement wall that I usually never look at, but for some reason on this night while I was praying, I dropped a sock, looked up, and the poster read, A Fresh New Start. Again, I smiled. Another real smile that I have not felt in so long. I knew that Jesus was going to help me and give me a fresh new start. But why didn't I rely on him at the beginning of this? Why did I only use my own strength? To this day, I truthfully don't know. I was raised in such strong Christian faith, and I'm now raising my daughter in the same faith, so why wasn't I using mine? In the beginning of my healing, there were times where I couldn't even pray. I would just listen to songs worshiping God and just cry. But I knew the Holy Spirit was in me and was doing the praying for me that I needed. I started doing one devotion book, then I started doing another. I was able to do these devotions, pray, and still listen to songs. So I started doing online sermons and more devotions. I started to read the book of Psalm one chapter a day. I started doing prayer journals and a daily devotion with a close friend. I would still come under attack often. I would find myself in the middle of the night, wide awake, crying out to God, saying, God, help me. I can't do this anymore. I just can't do this, please. I knew my healing wouldn't happen right away, but I never doubted him because the Bible says to be still. I was learning how to fight back and use God's strength. I learned that fear and anxiety are not from God. God only wants us to be filled with joy and peace. So I learned to fight Satan knowing that when I do, he has to flee. Right now, I'm doing so many devotions and prayer journals a day that instead of using the spare room for hiding and crying, I now use it to store all of them in. I recently hosted two online devotion groups with people that I know who also battle fear and anxiety. One of these groups are high school friends of mine. We decided to keep the group going after the devotion series was over, and now every single day we're praying for each other and building each other up. Now I can't even think about cleaning or doing laundry until I praise and worship him. I now fall asleep at night with no problems because I look forward to the next day's devotions. I now love to go outside and spend time with friends because I've learned to give him thanks for all that I have, see, and do. My prayers started out being just about me, but now I find myself praying more for others. I find myself sharing his word to others and will hear their name in my head over and over, and I know that I need to pray for them. I've also learned to pray and give thanks, thanking him for my daily victories, listing them one by one. I've learned that if you fight all of your battles, surrender to God, you will win every single time. I still have my days where I can feel my heart starting to race and my breath gets short, but I now know to say no. The devil has no control over me, and I have victory in Jesus' name. I learned to read Luke chapter 10, verse 19, as it reassures me that nothing can harm me. I learned to read Psalms 27 over and over just to remember that I have nothing to fear. I've learned by reading Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 to 18, that I can put on the full armor of God to stand my ground. I've learned in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 9 to 10, that it's okay to not be okay, and that what the enemy means for evil, God will use for good. I've learned by reading 1 Peter chapter 5, verses 6 to 10, to cast all of my anxieties, and trust me, it's really hard to do, on God because I know that he cares for me and is making me stronger throughout all of this. The hardest but most amazing thing that I've learned is in James chapter 1, verse 2, that whatever trial I face, I need to consider it pure joy because the testing of my faith produces perseverance that God has promised to strengthen me and bring me closer to him. Throughout all of this, I've learned that doctors are great. My doctors have all been wonderful. They've all listened to me. They've never, ever dismissed me. Going to therapy is great. I have a therapist that I go to weekly that makes me journal, which I'm very thankful for because I can see how far I've really come. Being medicated is absolutely fine. Relying on others is absolutely fine. And I even relied on my dogs and my cat, which is absolutely fine. But I will tell you that there is no peace quite like I have found in Jesus. I wish I could explain it more, how filled I am with joy, peace, and comfort, but I know I would never be able to. All I can do is share his love and be the light that others may need. I promise you that no matter what situation you may be going through, God will give you strength. Sharing this today was something I knew I always wanted to do, but I didn't know when it would happen because I felt like I would be under the control of anxiety forever, but here I am. Looking back at my first ever prayer journal, here is what I wrote on my very first day. Lord, I pray that I overcome my anxiety and all panic. Any negative, fearful, or anxious thoughts, I pray it leaves me. I pray that you soothe my troubled heart. Lord, I am so scared. I'm so tired of my anxiety, my panic attacks, and my fear. I know with you I don't need to be, but I pray that my trust becomes so strong and that my heart and mind are healed. I pray that I am healed to become a testimony for others, to share my faith story, and shine a bright light. 
So just as I said in the beginning, God is in my story, and I pray that he's in yours too.